Hi, I'm Kevin from AppNexus, live from New York, and I'm going to walk you through auction mechanics and signals today, as well as explain to you what's changing with the transparent auction. So, let me get started with a context for where auction mechanics fit into the end-to-end -end flow. So, as you know, the call comes to AppNexus from the page, or um, indirectly through the header uh, wrapper on the page, which results in a bid request being sent out and a bid response coming through from bidders once they receive that request, after which AppNexus holds an auction. So here's what's uh, changing. This bid request today contains a number of signals about the page, about the user, etc. And we're adding to that an additional signal about the auction type that I'll get into more depth later. But this will tell the bidder what kind of auction they can expect. And then in turn, the bidder will adapt their response, which we can take into account in the auction. So what happens next after the auction? Well, historically, the auction resulted in serving an ad directly to the page. But nowadays, with the advent of header bidding, frequently this auction actually results in and simply a bid being submitted to a header wrapper that in turn passes this bid onto the publisher's ad server or some other decisioning mechanic. So we would call this the final auction, okay? Because the publisher's typically managing an auction, consolidating bids from multiple auctions, not just AppNexus. So getting more transparency around auction mechanics will actually help buyers greatly to adapt their strategies in the multi-auction landscape. As the most important thing in any auction is to know the rules so you can bid accordingly, I'm going to walk you through the different types of auctions that, are, that commonly exist. So the simple first price auction has a straightforward mechanic of you pay what you bid. So a bid price directly translates into a price paid, um, minus any deductions, of course, for platform fees. The second price auction results in paying less than you bid because the bid price is determined by bid density in the auction, which is a, a function of taking the highest bid and price reducing it down to the second highest bid or the floor plus some increment which is usually a pain. Now, what about this enigma that are soft floors? So a soft floor is a custom auction dynamic that creates a hybrid between a first price auction and a second price auction based on a price threshold. So what I can draw out here is there's actually two types of auctions that can occur with soft floors. The first above a price threshold is a second price auction where buyers actually see price reduction but below a certain threshold there'll be a first price auction. This in turn can create some confusion to buyers about what type of auction they're in and the most important uh, confusion is when buyers think they're in a second price auction but they bid like they're in a first price auction, they can actually be reducing um, their bid price and vice versa when they're actually in a first price auction but they think they're in a second price auction, um, they can be overbidding and seeing reduced performance and results. So soft floor auction ultimately creates confusion for the buyer about what the rules of the game are and that's one reason why We've talked about them as an example of a type of auction that needs to become more transparent going forward. So what are we changing here? Most important thing that we're changing is the signal by which we explain to buyers what, the, what to expect in the auction. A first price auction is very straightforward. That's going to carry the open RTB auction type signal of one. A second price auction, which we will restrict to auctions that do not use soft floors, will carry the signal two. 
And finally, any auction that could use soft floors or is using any other custom mechanics that can result in first pricing buyers will be denoted as a one. That in turn tells buyers that they should treat a soft floor auction the same way that they treat a first price auction. And our analysis generally shows that that's the optimal strategy because the majority of soft floor auctions end up clearing as first price. Finally, there's one more point, which is at Nexus, we try to listen to all the supply that's fit to buy. So of course we have some auctions that are outside of our platform control that you could broadly put our label as an external auction. So these ones, we essentially don't know what the mechanic is, but because we don't know the mechanic, we're marking them as one with the suggestion that, that buyers test if uh, reducing their bid as if they're in a first price auction will in turn improve results. And just one more thing, we decided to go ahead after extensive testing and make first price our default for header supply. So I'm gonna walk you through why that is the case. So in a header setup, there's actually a multi-layer auction where demand bids through an SSP but potentially multiple SSPs on the same supply. And in turn, these SSPs pass bids to a header layer that passes on the first price to the publisher's ad server, where all those header bids compete against line items and other platforms in the publisher's ad server that themselves are at first price. So in the, the problem that this can create is if you imagine that there are two different SSPs that bidders are bidding through and, and they have different auction mechanics. One SSP has a first price auction, the other SSP is running a second price auction. If in turn, those three buyers have willingness to pay of $4, $5, and $6, there's a scenario I'll show you where the buyer who's willing to pay the most for the impression doesn't win. So, in this simple case, bidder one and bidder two are passing their four and five dollar bids into the SSP, which is in turn passing those bids of four and five dollars to the header, which is passing those on to the ad server. Okay? And of course, the ad server is going to run the final auction, taking into account all the bids that come to it. However, there's this other bidder, number three, which is bidding through an SSP that has a second price auction. So let's imagine what happens here is the $6 bid gets submitted to the SSP, but the SSP runs a second price auction, and for whatever reason, given its internal bid density dynamics, closes this auction off at $3. So now $3 is being passed to the header and through to the ad server, and the winner in this case is bidder number two that actually was not willing to pay as much as bidder number three. Remember, bidder number two was only willing to pay $5 for the impression. Bidder number three was willing to pay up to six. So the best possible result could would have been if bidder three either bid through an SSP with first price, they would have won, or even better, bidder number three recognizing the transparent auction signal in first price realizes that the final auction is likely to clear for somewhere above $5, and they bid, say, $5.50. And in turn, that bid is passed all the way down, and they're able to win. So we made that change so that buyers could have more control, more transparency, and better results in the header, as well as a number of ad systems that look very much like the header that may substitute a server-side layer um, or something baked into the ad server for the type of uh, decisioning that the header provides. So that is our change in the header. Now for publishers that aren't using header, we're encouraging them to adopt transparent auctions as well. As noted, we had discussed earlier the, the challenges that soft floors pose to buyers. So we're giving sellers the option to adopt the transparent first price auction or a transparent second price auction when they do not use header bidding. If you're a current customer with questions, contact your AppNexus account manager. And if you're not yet a customer, please get in touch via our website at appnexus.com. Thank you.